Welcome to my bespoke, I'm Atenas. Today I'm going to teach you how to make a simple and bulky Tunisian crochet blanket. So let's get started. So here's a look at the blanket we're going to be crocheting today. Now this is going to be a simple two row repeat pattern. We're going to be using a knit stitch and a back loop Tunisian simple stitch to create this. And this is a look at the front. Here's a look at the back. I still have to weave in these little ends, so just ignore them for now. But this is a look at the back of the blanket. So we're going to start by working on the stitch, and then at the end of the video, I'll tell you all about the yarn I used, all the yardage, the hook size, and all of that good stuff. So let's begin with the stitch. And for this, I'm just going to use a medium yarn. And you can use any yarn you have on hand, and then a just any Tunisian hook you have available. So we're going to begin by making a chain. Now this is going to be worked in even numbers. So you can make a chain as long as you want, so long as it's worked in even numbers. I'm just going to make a small sample, so I'm going to make a chain of 20 stitches. So we're going to begin with a slip knot. So we'll wrap the yarn around two fingers, insert your hook behind this front loop. You're going to grab the loop that's in the back, pull it through, and tighten your threads to tighten the knot. Now to make the chain, for those of you that don't know how, you're going to wrap the yarn around your hook, and you're going to pull this top loop through the bottom loop, and there is one chain. So yarn over, pull through for two, three, four, and just continue to chain until you have any even number stitches that you want. Once you've completed your chain, we're going to begin our foundation row. So we're going to begin to cast on, skipping the first stitch right into this second one. So cast on into the second stitch, you're going to insert your hook into that stitch, and you're going to yarn over, and you're going to pull up a loop. You're going to leave this loop on your hook, and then repeat in the next stitch. Insert your hook into the stitch, yarn over, and pull up a loop. Repeat this in every one of the stitches of the chain. Now, you're going to have the same number of loops on your hook as you stitched number of chains. So my sample was a chain of 20, which means at the end of this row, I should have 20 loops on my hook. So we're going to finish up our foundation row. Now this initial chain and in our foundation row is going to determine the width of our blanket. With each row, we're going to add length to this blanket. So for any of you that are resizing or using a different size yarn, whatever it is, just make sure that the length of your chain is the width that you want for your blanket. All right, so let's work on our return pass. We are going to yarn over and pull through this first loop on our hook. Now for the rest of these loops, we're going to yarn over and pull through two. So yarn over and pull through these two loops right here. So it's one, two, and then yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and so forth until you are left with just one loop on your hook. Now this is a regular return pass or just a standard return pass. We're going to use the same return pass throughout the entire pattern. Once you get to the end, and we're going to be left with one loop on our hook, and that's our foundation row. Now, like I said before, this is a two row repeat, so we're going to begin here with row one. We're going to skip the first vertical stitch. We're going to begin on the second one. So this first vertical stitch, you already have that on your hook. That's why we're going to skip it. Beginning on that second vertical stitch, you're going to work a Tunisian knit stitch. Now, if we take a look at the stitch, it's made up of the two legs or the two loops. So you've got the front and the back one. You're going to insert your hook between both legs of the stitch and go all the way through to the back of the fabric. And then you're going to yarn over and you're going to pull up a loop. And that was a knit stitch. You're going to leave this loop on your hook and move on to the next one. Now for this next one, we're going to work this like a Tunisian simple stitch, but we are going to be using the back leg. So you're going to insert your hook through the back of the fabric. So you're going to grab the back leg. So this is the front one and here's the back one. So insert your hook through the back, grab the back leg of the stitch and pull that onto your hook like this. You're going to yarn over and pull up a loop. And there you go. So that was the back loop Tunisian simple stitch. Now the, the rest of the row, you're going to work the same sequence. So it's going to be knit stitch, back loop, Tunisian simple stitch, and then knit stitch, back loop, Tunisian simple stitch. That is a mouthful. You're going to repeat that until you get to the end of the row. So our next stitch is going to be a knit stitch. So we're just going to insert a hook into the stitch, 
yarn over and pull up a loop. The stitch after that, which is going to be stitch number four, is a Tunisian uh, simple stitch using the back loop. So we're going to insert our hook through the back of the fabric. We're going to grab that back loop or the back leg. So that's on our hook. We're going to yarn over and we're going to cast on one. And there you go. So repeat this sequence until you get to the end of the row. Alright, so I'm going to work this last vertical stitch of the row and you get to the final stitch. So the final stitch has these two little legs on the side and then it's got one that's kind of hidden on the inside. But for the sake of the pattern, if you're going to read the written pattern, this is going to be the final stitch. Now if you separate it, you're going to see that it's made up of three legs. So you've got one that's closer to the center and then you've got these two on the side. What I do is I normally insert my hook like so. So I've got the two side legs and then the one in the center is on the other side of the hook. You're just going to yarn over and pull up a loop. So you cast on one and then you work a regular return pass. And just a refresher, that's yarn over, pull through one and then yarn over, pull through two for the rest of the row. So that was row one. We finished our return pass and now we're going to begin row two. Now it's going to be almost the same as row one, but we're going to invert the stitches. So for row number one, we're going to begin with a back loop Tunisian simple stitch. In the previous row, so for row one, we began with a knit stitch. So now in this row, we have to do the opposite stitch, which is that back loop Tunisian simple stitch. So again, we're going to insert our hook through the back of the fabric. We're going to grab the back loop or the back leg, yarn over and pull up a loop. In the next stitch, so this is going to be stitch number two, it's vertical stitch number three, you're going to knit stitch and then back loop Tunisian simple stitch, knit stitch, simple stitch, knit stitch until you complete the row. Remember that you are always skipping the very first vertical stitch of the row. Now a little trick to just kind of keep track of where you're at in case you put your work down is you see these short stitches? So the short stitch you're going to knit stitch and in these long stitches you're going to work a back loop Tunisian simple stitch. So that kind of helps you keep track if you have to put your, your work down for any reason. Just look for the short stitch, that's knit stitch. The long stitch is a back stitch or a back loop Tunisian stitch. So once you get to the end of the row, I'm going to cast on a knit stitch here on the final vertical stitch. And then in this final stitch right here, I'll show you again. So here are the three little legs. So you've got the two side legs and then the one that's closest to the center. Insert your hook between the two side stitches and the one that's close to the center. So you have two loops or two legs on the side of the hook. And once you've cast on, you work a return pass and that's it. So that is the two row repeat for the pattern. You're just going to repeat rows one and two until you get the length that you want for this blanket. Something I forgot to point out while I was showing you how to work this back loop Tunisian stitch is where to put this yarn. So the yarn that's in the back right here. So you want to hold this thread behind your hook. So if you were to hold it in front of your hook, so before you cast on, so we're going to hold our yarn like this and then you go to cast on into this back leg, you're going to get a stitch that goes across this way. What we're looking for is just a very simple Tunisian stitch. So you're going to hold the yarn behind your hook like this. Then you're going to cast on your hook or not the hook. You're going to cast on your stitch. So insert your hook into the stitch and then pull up a loop. So again, you want the yarn behind your hook, not in front like this. So once you complete the length that you want for your blanket, we're going to have to complete a bind off row. And the bind off row is going to close the space in between this stitching. So I'm going to work a knit stitch and it's a knit stitch single crochet bind off. For this, we're going to also skip the very first vertical stitch and we're going to work into the second one. So in this second vertical stitch, we're going to work a knit stitch. So cast on one knit stitch by inserting your hook in between the front and back leg of the vertical stitch, all the way to the back, yarn over and pull up a loop. Once you have two loops on your hook, you're going to close the stitch like you would a single crochet. So you're going to yarn over and pull this thread through the two loops already on your hook. So it's just a single crochet. We're going to go into the next stitch and do the same. So you're going to knit stitch and once you have two loops on your hook, you're going to yarn over and pull through both loops. 
so that's a knit stitch, single crochet, bind off. Repeat this in all of the vertical stitches of the row. So let's talk about a little troubleshooting for the bind off row. Depending on what size hook or yarn combination you use, or even just the size of your stitching, you can end up with a bind off row that is wider than the rest of your blanket. If that happens, switch your hook size. So if we take a look at my hook, I'm working with an eight millimeter hook right now. If that bind off row is wider than my blanket, I would switch to a seven millimeter hook to complete my bind off. And that would make this bind off row a little more narrow and it would match that foundation row so that you have a nice square blanket or rectangular, whatever you want. So this happens because sometimes the stitching for that single crochet can be a little bit wider. So it'll open up that top row of your blanket. So again, just switch your hook size to something smaller. Do the same if it's narrower. So for whatever reason, your bind off row is narrower than your foundation row, then just use a bigger hook. Now, once you get to this final stitch of the row, you're going to single crochet, and then we're going to end in a chain one. So just chain one, that's going to make a nice small knot. We're going to tighten that up, leave a long tail of yarn, cut and pull your yarn and your hook out. Then you go through, weave in all of your ends and you're good to go. If you are kind of new to this, to the crochet world and you are not quite sure what to do to when you attach yarn, when you attach a new hank, a new skein, a new cake, whatever you want to call it, new yarn, leave a long tail end. So double up your thread, make a knot, but make sure you leave a long tail end of yarn because when you wash your blankets, sometimes that yarn will become undone. So if you have that long tail that you then weave in, you won't have a problem with your uh, project unraveling if you wash it. So just a little pointer. It took me a few years to learn that. So I thought I'd share. So let's talk materials, hook sizes, and all that good stuff for this blanket. You really can use any size hook and any size yarn you want to make this blanket. Make a small swatch like the one we just did. That way you can see how big your stitching is going to be, switch hook sizes, switch yarn sizes. The important thing is going to be the length of your Tunisian hook. Now, this Tunisian hook I'm holding right here is a, it has a 16 inch cord. That's about 40 centimeters in length. And with this, with this cord, I can make a small baby blanket. So that's maybe about 30 inches or so. So it's about 76 centimeters. If you are going to make a larger blanket, then you need a hook with a larger cord. So this cord is about 32 inches, which is about 81 centimeters. With a cord this length, I can make a very wide blanket. So it's gonna fit at least a double size bed or a full size bed, if not larger, depending on my yarn size. So if I'm using a thicker yarn, like a bulky, it's gonna be slightly narrower than if I'm using a a medium yarn, a DK, or a sport yarn, I can make a much larger blanket. So pay attention to the length of your cord for your Tunisian afghan hook. Now for this blanket that I showed you here at the beginning of the video, I used a bulky yarn. So that's why this is a nice bulky blanket. I used this yarn right here. Now this specific yarn is only available at Michael's stores in the US, but really you can use any bulky yarn that is available to you. So here's a look at the yardage, just some of the yarn information. I used a total of four skeins, and yes, I do say skeins, not skeins. Um, I used four of them. So here's the total length and the total yardage I used. This is, like I said, a size five bulky yarn. Again, use any yarn that you want, whether it's bulky or not. I used a 15 millimeter hook. If you like making the bulky blankets or you like using chunky yarns or anything like that, I highly recommend you get a set of these really big Tunisian hooks. Now, these come in a set of three. I'll put the link for the Amazon shop where I got these down in the description box below. This one comes with a 15 millimeter hook, a 20 and a 25 millimeter. The length of the cord, last I checked, you could select what length you wanted. So I got the one that's about the 30 inches, but you can get a larger one if you intend to make much bigger blankets. I think there's like a 48 inch cord. Anyway. I'll put the link down in the description box, check those out. Really, like I said earlier in the video, you can make this blanket using 
any size hook, any size yarn. PDF pattern is written for a bulky yarn, so it is going to have the bulky yarn and a 15 millimeter hook. Now, if you want to use a smaller yarn like the sample we made today, you're just going to have to experiment with different hook sizes and yarn sizes until you find the size that you want. As far as the measurements for this blanket, it is 46.5 inches across or 118 centimeters, and it is 41.5 inches in length or 105 centimeters. With this size blanket, I chained 150 stitches at the very beginning and then just worked about 42 rows. So it was the foundation row, 42 rows, and then your bind off row. If you would like to resize it, then just chain any number of even stitches and work as many rows as you want to create the length for your blanket. But that's it. If you'd like to see more of my work, you can follow me on Instagram. You can also find the written pattern for this and many other projects on my website. I'll leave all the links down in the description box below. If you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button, and I will see you all again in the next tutorial.